Hello, my name is Pete Gerlach, and I am a veteran family systems therapist. I've been studying human relationships and dynamics and families and people for over 30 years. I've evolved a self-improvement website, which you may or may not be aware of. It's seven self-improvement lessons based on everything I've learned across all my uh, personal adult life and experience, professional experience. One of the seven lessons in my website is about optimizing your relationships. It's lesson four, and this video is part of that lesson. In this video, I want to focus on what I assume is a reasonably important aspect of your life, friendships. Um, most of us want friendships. Some people don't claim to need them, but in case you do, in this brief video, I want to offer you some perspective on uh, friendships and seven specific options for improving the quality and quantity of your friendships. As a way of starting, imagine <coughs> allowing yourself to image a semicircle of people, and the people are your friends. People that, in your judgment, qualify for the special label, he or she is my friend. So imagine all the people you call friends in a semicircle around you, looking at you. Notice what that feels like. Then notice um, how many friends you have. Uh, doesn't, you know, lots, a few. Notice if you include kids teens, or just adults, old people, people of color, yes, no, whatever your ethnicity is, males, females, do you have any preferences? Just notice who are your friends and what do they have in common. Reflect, what makes these people stand out for you as opposed to a large number of people that you would not say well, yeah, we're friends. You might say we're acquaintances. What's the difference? How would you describe to, say, an average 12-year-old? The 12-year-old said, what is a friend? Why, why are some people friends? What would you say? Compare your answer to some of these variables that occur to me. Uh, the first thing that characterizes um, solid friendships is shared interests and shared experiences over time. You can be friends with a few experiences, but over time you share conversations, activities, other, other relationships, so you have things in common. Two real key things, in my opinion, for solid friendships are mutual respect. I respect me, I respect you. You respect you, you respect me. Can you have a friendship without those four things? I doubt it. Alongside of that, you establish over time mutual trust. I trust I am safe with you. You trust the same about me. We have mutual trust. <clears throat> How about empathy? Can you have a solid friendship without shared empathy? Can you define the difference between empathy and sympathy? There is an important difference. I'm not going to go into it here. But I propose that real friendships, as opposed to superficial or phony friendships, real friendships have common shared empathy. Okay? Because of your trust uh, and your mutual acceptance, which is another factor, you develop uh, a certain amount of intimacy, social intimacy. I'm not talking sexual. I'm saying I will share with you my dreams, my hopes, my fears, my disappointments, my frustrations, because I feel you will accept me, not ridicule me, not reject me, not lecture me, not intellectualize. I, you and I grow over time a sense of trust and intimacy. Another real important factor required, in my opinion, for healthy, strong relationships 
in general, friendships in particular, is effective communication. That's a big topic. It's lesson three in my website. I have a whole bunch of videos on that. So I'm not going into detail here, other than to say, if you uh, want to improve the quality and quantity of your friendships, improve your ability to think and communicate. Pretty common sense, right? Easy to say, not so easy to do. Another ingredient is mutual acceptance. Even though I don't agree with some things about you, or even don't like some things about you, I still accept you and value you. We each share mutual acceptance, right? I suspect that most of the people in your semicircle you admire for some qualities. Honesty, sense of humor, dependability, lots of qualities, but friendship usually incurs mutual admiration of certain characteristics that each of us brings to the table. We share values. I, I'm a vegetarian, a vegetarian, so are you. Oh, okay, we think alike on that. You put all these factors together and over time what occurs is caring and bonding. A mutual caring. I really care about you. I want to know about you. I'm interested in your welfare and you are in mine. And that's reassuring and pleasing. Would you agree that all these elements together are important for building and maintaining friendships? Could you have named these things before you listen to my list here? Do you think all the people in your semicircle could list these factors? Do you think friendships are more likely if you keep these factors in mind? The key here is awareness. It's the very first key, awareness. Now, what are some things that get in the way of friendships? Um, to state the obvious, the lack of any of these requisites that I just mentioned, several that you might not be aware of. The biggest hindrance to forming and maintaining healthy, real friendships as opposed to pseudo-friendships or strategic friendships, the biggest factor of all is inherited psychological wounds. There are seven wounds. If you don't know what they are, See my videos in playlists 1B and 1C. See my lesson 1 in my website. It's the biggest reason people have trouble making and keeping healthy, mutually nourishing friendships. I won't go into detail on that right now. A quick preview. These wounds are excessive shame, excessive guilt, excessive fear, difficulty trusting, and most importantly, difficulty empathizing and bonding. Wounds prevent and wreck friendships. A second major factor that gets in the way of friendships is lack of awareness and lack of knowledge. Knowledge of two specific things, in my opinion. There are many things, but two stand out. Most of the people that I've met as a counselor, a couple, I work with hundreds and hundreds of couples, Many of them who were troubled, uh, in my experience, almost all of them could not communicate and problem solve effectively. It's a lack of awareness of the seven vital communication skills you need with anybody, not just friends. So a factor that gets in the way of friendships is inability to think and communicate. And a related unawareness is ignorance of, of uh, relationship skills. Can you name relationship skills? I'll go into detail on that in a minute. So these are three major things that gets in the way, get in the way of forming and maintaining and increasing healthy friendships. Psychological wounds which are inherited from our ancestors and unawareness of effective communication and healthy, effective relationship skills. You can improve each one of those three things once you're aware of them. Notice your reaction. 
I want to end this video with seven brief suggestions based on what I just said. Here are seven specific things that you can do if you want to improve the quality of your friendships and or you want more friendships. The first thing to do, and the most powerful in my biased opinion, study lesson one in my website and the related videos, the objective of which is to free your true self. If that doesn't mean anything to you now, I encourage you to research my videos and lesson one in my website. If you're ruled by a false self, you will have trouble with healthy friendships. You can also improve intentionally in case you lack self-confidence and if you don't love yourself, you can improve those two qualities, those two prizes, intentionally. I'm not going to go into detail now. I have other videos which offer suggestions on that. But besides reducing your wounds and freeing your true self, put your mind to consciously, over time, improving your self-confidence and your self-love. Easy to say, not easy to do. The third specific thing you can do is become aware of your attitudes. Some attitudes can really kill or hinder true, uh, healthy, mutually enjoyable friendships. For instance, an attitude is, you owe me. Another attitude is, I deserve. I can go on at great length about attitudes like this, but attitudes which place your needs above that of your partner or give you a sense of you know more than them or you deserve more than they, Attitudes like that will wreck or prevent friendships. So take a look at some of your expectations, your attitudes about friendships, which lead to expectations. I expect you to tell me every single thing about your life. Really? That's pretty unrealistic. So inventory your expectations and upgrade them, perhaps with the help of an objective helper. Upgrade your communication and thinking skills. You can do that by studying lesson two on my website. <coughs> um, intentionally upgrade your relationship skills. To do that, you need to be able to name them. Here are just a couple. A very powerful relationship skill is knowing how to assert your boundaries with another person. You know what a boundary is? Can you describe it? You have to learn how to assert your boundaries and enforce your boundaries. Those are two related relationship skills. How are you at doing that? Effective sometimes, most of the time, all the time? It's a relationship skill. The second one to develop is the quality of your empathy. Many people don't realize they can improve their degree of empathy. That's a very fundamental aspect of your communication skills, by the way. These all work together. Okay. Um, one you might not think of, an idea towards uh, improving your friendships, is identify what your passion is. I'm guessing that one or more things in your life qualify as a passion, something you care deeply about and are willing to put time and effort into learning more about and helping other people to learn about. Could be problems with money, with flowers, with home decorating, with learning how to name the stars, with psychology, the amazing variety of topics that we have available to us. Find what your passion is. Identify your life mission. And then look for other people who share your passion. I suspect you've already in your lifetime met one or more people who have very common interests of yours. Interests are kind of shallow. Passion is much deeper. Have you met people who share your passion? Have they become friends? If you know your passion, it's much more likely that you can seek out intentionally other people who share your passion. It breeds friendships. Ever thought about that? 
A related option that you have is intentionally overcome any fear of rejection, of ridicule, um, of disinterest, of conflict, and intentionally put yourself in social situations. Once again, sounds easy. Many fear-based people won't do that. They, they prefer to isolate themselves. They take very few risks socially. If you want more friendships, there ain't no such thing as, fr as free lunch. That's the Tanstoffel principle. If you want something, you got to put out for it. In this case, intentionally risk putting yourself in social situations that are safe enough. Okay? So there are a number of things that you can do to improve the quality of and the number of your friendships. I've just been very superficial here. I've just named a few things. If you want more detail and if you want time to reflect on all that you've encountered here in this brief video, here are two web articles. They're free. There are no ads whatsoever. Get that? None. Here are two self-improvement lessons on the web, sorry, articles, that I recommend to you. It will give you more perspective than this video does. Here are the links. They are in my nonprofit website. And also, here uh, is a video on something that blocks uh, friendships real strongly is called emotional unavailability. It's a complex subject. It comes from psychological wounds. But if you feel difficulty in bonding or empathizing, this video may give you some useful options. So here's the link to that video. Overall, the purpose of this video, which is part of Lesson 4, Optimizing Your Relationships, the purpose has been to raise your awareness and perhaps your curiosity about the number and quality of the friendships in your life. And if you want to improve those things, some real specific things that you can do in order to gain those prizes. As a way of closing, let me ask you to, once again, take a look at the semicircle of friends that are now gracing your life, and you grace those people too. Just take a look at them and appreciate each one of them. And consider, what would it be like to watch this video with each one of them, separately or together, and discuss it with them? It's an option. I thank you for your time and interest. As always, if you have comments on this video or any other, or comments or suggestions or criticisms, of my website, I would be glad to hear from you. Thanks very much for your attention.